Welcome to the Black Men Think Podcast. If this is your first time here, know that the views and opinions expressed by the Black Men Think Podcast, are those of the Black Men Think Podcast and not the individual members. With that being said, we're about to be unapologetically, undeniably black. Enjoy. I just got one question. Y'all getting a vaccine or not? <laughs> Corey, you getting it up? Now, if y'all take it, let me know how it is for about a month or two. Then I'll, I'll see what's up. But for real, man, um, after after hearing from people that that I know and they've taken it, I mean, granted, they, they're they older, um, but it just still make me a little bit more comfortable about taking it. Um, I just, I didn't want to be a guinea pig to to the vaccine and not know what to expect, but um, a few people, younger people in the medical field, I've seen they've been posting about, um, you know, taking it and they <clears throat> had the, the mild symptoms, but nothing serious. So maybe it won't be so bad. What, so what, what, what has you afraid or like, or you just don't, you just don't feel like it's uh it'll help or well not necessarily saying it won't help it's just something that's just new so it's like okay. you know you got this new vaccine out like i'm not gonna be the you know the test dummy for, for it first yeah so right. i just wanted to see how it affect other people and you know when i hear about you know i took it you know i had a maybe a sore arm after my first shot and after the second shot maybe some mild flu-like symptoms but then after that you know you find um so that made me a little bit more comfortable to say that you know maybe this is something that I can agree to doing because I mean definitely I don't want you know COVID yeah yeah I mean I ain't gonna lie like you know I, I was I'm definitely I was definitely one of the ones that was like nah bro first of all the government giving this out this right. pandemic already feels lopsided as it is you know and then, I mean, you know, you hear all the conspiracy theories. Black people got a reason not to trust the government anyway. You know, let's let's, yeah, let's yeah. keep it real. I mean, Tuskegee, all that, you know, <laughs> crack epidemic, I mean, just everything, you know? So we, uh, we have a million reasons to have questions. Um, but I will say this, man, like I have completely shifted my perspective recently. Um, Shout out to Tyler Perry. I mean, he did this uh, this special on BT, right? And I'm sure a lot of our listeners may may have have seen it. And if you haven't, you know, I'd, I'd encourage everybody to see it. Not because like it's going to persuade you to take the vaccine if you didn't feel like you should, but more or less, it was very informative. And I put it like this: He, as a skeptic, at one point he he will share like he asked all the questions that I had, like, mm. all right, well, can we even trust this or you know, is it gonna make me sick? Like they haven't even had a real chance to text to uh, test vaccines, you know, the way that they typically do, um, which take years. And now they're, they're you know, doing these rapid, you know, uh, preparation of these vaccines and just trying to get them out it just doesn't feel right. And, and these two, um, you know, medical doctors, one black lady, one guy, I couldn't tell really what his background was, but I mean, he, they, bo they both kept it extremely real with their answers. And for me, it was just very informative. And I think the point that drove home for me was just like, the reality is this, pa this pandemic is real. Like it is, it is killing people, it is dangerous. Um, and the long-term effects of it can look, who knows what, like how bad it's gonna look for anybody, you know? Um, and I was just like, man, at the end of the day, I could get this vaccine and maybe, you know, what at worst, well, I mean, I guess we don't know what at worst is yet, but I do know what the coronavirus is doing to people, you know? So I'm like, man, for me, I got family, you know, I got parents I wanna, I wanna see around for, for a while. I just had somebody at my, at my job, just lost their mom, COVID, like quick too. You know, so, you know, for me, it was just like, all right, I think I will do this. I mean, obviously I can't do it yet, but I yeah. made my decision to go ahead and do it. Um, <clears throat> I, I mean, honestly, man, I'm like somewhere in the middle, uh, really, because 
I mean, just and, and y'all know my story, but just the timeline of at the very beginning of this, around this time last year, when all the information was coming in, I was probably one of those people who were like, I was aware that it was real. Mm-hmm. I, I've never wavered from that it was real, but honestly, right. the way that the perception and how, how I was starting to perceive it was like, this was something that was happening over there, right? Yeah. And it wasn't in America at the time. And But what I didn't take into account was that how we were going to handle it. <laughs> right like other countries it happened over there and they started to take precautions immediately and so yeah. in my mindset was that okay when it started happening here we'll take those same precautions everything will be okay because early on there was a lot of comparison with the flu and it's just I know what the flu is I know people around me that have had the flu like and so I wasn't I wasn't really hard pressed I wasn't worried about it whatever um, and then it, it hit, it stopped a lot of our travel plans and, and all of, I've told that story and then everything kind of came around. And then even my experience with it, with me being perfectly safe and realized that it came through my child. And so mm. that was a rude awakening, of course. Mm. Like, I mean, my, like I, I've told this story before, but I, I didn't really have any, it wasn't any major effects on me. I kind of, you know, I was just down for like a day or two really but um i know that i'm an anomaly in that like that's that's not that's a rare thing that happened right. and so um even with all of that being said i still had my concerns about the vaccine mainly because i felt like it was just happening too fast that's mm-hmm. really what it boils down to like yeah. it's not that i'm afraid of getting vaccinated um i know that my parents were vaccinated right mm-hmm. I, they still have most of our parents if they are you know in their fifties, at least they you all they all got a mark on their arm from whatever vaccine that was. I don't know if it was polio or whatever it was, but they got the vaccine. And so I'm I'm, I'm aware of vaccinations, um, and, and so I wasn't afraid of it, and, and I didn't really necessarily fall in the the midst of the conspiracy theory about uh, the getting a vaccine. But I'm just more so like Corey, like I just didn't want to be first number mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like it's just it all of this stuff is happening like super fast. Right? It is fast. It's like super fast. And you know, um the, the good thing about the world that we live in now is that we're bombarded with information, but that's also a bad thing too, because right. there's so much information that sometimes it's hard to make a real logical decision. Um in my household, my wife, she she got it, right? She had the option to get it at her job. We talked about it. And honestly, I didn't want her to get it. I didn't want her to be like one of those early people. Mm-hmm. But she she brought up a good point. She was like, look, they're not they're they're not pressuring us, but they slick pressuring us at work to get it. Like she works in the medical field. But the other part of that was that she she brought it in perspective of this might not be available when it's time for our age group to get it. Like, you oh, know, that's real. Oh, that's a good that's a good point. I ain't thinking you know about what I'm that. saying. And yeah. so she was looking at it mere from the like the mere fact of like, okay, it's available. I can get it now being a healthcare professional. Let me go ahead and get it now, just in case. Like, yeah, there are risks, like there's risk in anything, but ultimately my wife lives a very healthy lifestyle. And so she felt comfortable enough to get it. She she get her flu shot every year. So for her, it was like you no know, brainer. There's no brainer. Like, this is what I do anyway. Um and, and so I was terrified of it. You know, she had some mild symptoms after she got it, but, um, you know, after like two days, she was really fine. Like she had um, like a headache. And of course, like um, she was hurting at the sight of, of, of where she got the vaccination. But I mean, she's she's fine and, and preferably she stays fine. Uh, we don't know what can happen in the future, but from every view of it, it looks like everything's a okay. And so, that definitely eased my mind a lot. Mm. Um, yeah. Seeing somebody that I'm personally connected with go through it and, and be fine. But um, I just know, man, the last time I got any type of vaccination, like I got severely sick. That's probably really? the, the most sick that when I got a flu shot and this was like, uh, man, maybe like 2006 or seven or so, something so like you that. Don't, so you don't get the flu shot every year either? No, no, no. I got the I flu never, shot that I time. Never got flu shot. You and never I, got a flu yeah. shot? Wow. I never got it again, bro. Like I got sick yeah. and that was the sickest that I have ever been. And I was like, I just, it, and 
I don't know. That could have just been like how my body reacted to that. But I told myself, like, I'll never do this again. So part of that is like my stubbornness right now that's kind of weighing on me, like not wanting to get this. And plus, I still have other questions. Like as somebody that had um, COVID, like what happens if I get a vaccination after I've already had it? Like, I don't right. know. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've, I haven't seen anybody talk about that, like vaccinating people that already had it. And mm-hmm. I could be wrong, but I haven't personally seen that information. Like, what happens now? Because I, I watched that Tyler Ty- Ty- Perry doc too, Mo, and mm-hmm. the way that the doctor, and I, and I forgot her name, I think it was Kimberly something, but the way that she mm-hmm. explained it was like, it. it's not a, you're not getting COVID when you mm-hmm. get the vaccination. You're getting right. these blockers that basically mm-hmm. recognize when COVID is around and it puts your body in motion to like protect it, right? Like yeah. kind of do what your immune system normally does. Right. Like when you get sick, everything goes in and attack. Like this doesn't belong here and it attacks it. So that's kind of like the the basic um, principle of it. So I just don't know. That's a question that I'll have to ask. Like what happens for somebody that already, you know, have been through that process? Like what is that? To, to do so i'm still yeah. i'm still in between bro honestly I, I just don't know what i want to do because i mean the reality is you can get vaccinated and still get COVID again like it's right. not like you know it's end not- all be all but yeah. you know it it supposedly trains your body to respond to fight you know and so i guess you have this um cold in you if, if i could use that word that you didn't have before you know right. and it's interesting you even talk about like it, you know, the reality of like how available is it going to be when our age group is able to get it? Because like my parents can get it now, where right? they done had the hardest time in the world trying to get it. You know, yeah. my wife, my wife, she got her first vaccination too. Um, you know, she's in the medical field, and, and she went ahead and decided to do it. But like, and then her mom actually was able to register for it. But like, in certain, I guess it's in certain areas or certain pockets or something, man, it's just hard to come by, you know? And granted, my parents live in a county like Gwinnett County. And if you're from Georgia, you know, that's like a super populated space. So, you know, I done sent them information from like different counties and just as, as much info as I can find so right. that they can try to find access to it. But it's just, I guess the availability is still very scarce compared to amount of maybe the, the demand, you know? So right, just imagine right, right. when they open up to the full public. I mean, it is probably gonna be hard to come by. Yeah, yeah they, unless, they unless the production ramps up. I mean, which they is, may yeah, have to look into yeah. another county because I know of someone who had to go to another county to get it um, because the county they lived in was too. I guess they didn't have enough. Um, they didn't have a appointments available for the shot, so they ended up going to another county to get it. So that might yeah. that might be an option. Yeah. I just know for us, our age group, I believe we are in tier three. I mean, tier like C or D or whatever. But mm. our talent table is um, basically like late summer, early fall. Mm. And so, gotcha. I mean, <laughs> it, it, there's a chance that it may not be available for us unless other companies come on and, and start developing. Like I, I know Pfizer, um, Modera, and um, there's one other company that I just saw the other day. I can't, I think, um, jo- I, could, jo- I think it was Justin. It might Justin. be Justin. And Justin. You know something? Justin, yeah, that's Justin. what I was about to yeah. say. I was yeah. like, make no shit? No, I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want to be the one. I, I could be wrong. Could, no, I think you're right. I think it is Justin. Justin. I think it is Justin. Justin. And Justin. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know, man. Like, we'll that, see. I, see, that's that's the thing, though. Like, like, real question: As black people, are we re, are we tripping? Like, do like even with like things like the flu shot? Like, are we in our in our feelings in our heads and like not listening to medical guidance as we should, or do we for real have reason to be like, mm, nah, bro? Like, I'm I'm good because I mean, let's let's keep it real, like. We're kind of skeptical about a lot of things, and and it, it it goes across generations. Like older folks don't go to the doctor, they they don't you know they don't go do their checkups, they don't go, they don't tell people about their health issues. Younger people, we're very skeptical because we have, like you said, a ton of information coming mm-hmm. in from all kind of ways. A lot of this information competes with each other. We feel some kind of way about anything government led. You know, we have questions, obviously. 
the last uh, administration had a lot to do with that. Let's keep it real. Like right. anything re- related to COVID-19 under the watch of Donald Trump affected how a lot of people viewed it because of yeah. how he mishandled the pandemic to begin with. It felt very, you know, misleading from jump, you know, from dumping, you know, a lot of his supporters and stuff, dumping stocks and, you know, or, or you know, I mean, the whole picture just with Trump attached to it feels like, bro, he is not in it for us. And, and, and that's just factual. However, I just wonder, like, like, do we be tripping and do we hold ourselves back? I don't know what y'all thoughts are. I mean, I don't feel like, I mean, me personally, I don't feel like I'm tripping because like I said, I've never taken a flu shot. So it's That's like, any, yeah. it's like, I'm like, uh, I don't know. But then when you start hearing about people, all oh, they in the beginning was like, oh, you, if you have underlying conditions and make it worse, this, that, and the other, then when you pop up and find out somebody on a ventilator and they never really even been sick like that, you start to think like, man, I guess underlying conditions really doesn't matter because I mean, people that are appear to be in perfect health get it. So it's like, um, you can't really consider that. But I mean, I I don't know. It's just, as, as I said, as more and more people start to get it, like if y'all got it and y'all, you know, after a while y'all are cool, then I'd be like, you know, I guess as I, you know, I'm, I'm fine with it. But, um, when it was just, when they first started talking about it, I'm like, bro, I don't know about this, man. Um, I'm just not, I'm just not too sure about it. Yeah. But then when you on the flip side, it's like, I don't want to be up in the hospital. Of course, if I'm on a ventilator, I'm out. But I don't want to be sick or in the hospital and then start thinking to myself, man, I should have taken the, the vaccine. And yeah. at least it would have, I mean, it's not going to guarantee I won't get it, but it would have um, decreased my chances of getting it. So I don't want to be one of those people. Yeah. I'll say, man, um, <clears throat> to answer your question directly, Mo, I think we are at times, honestly, if I can be as transparent as possible, yeah. But I think a lot of that has to just do with like systematic um, oppression. I don't want to so. say racist. I just want to say just really like how we were brought up, bro. Like, yeah. I mean, I was brought up in a household and not just like my immediate family, but like my grandmother, aunties and uncles, that legit, if you made a mistake and swept their leg with a broom, they want to spit on the broom. Like, it's bad luck. You know what I'm saying? And, and so, He's superstition, bro. Yeah, the superstition. Yeah. And so a lot of that stuff, you don't realize it as a child, like how it shapes you until you yeah, get, that's real. At, as you become an adult and you realize how like, part of my French, how stupid that stuff is, bro. Like, mm. I mean, really, bro. Like, we talk about I've known people, not just in my family, just like friends and other people around me that legit will put their whole trust into the lottery, right? Mm-hmm. Like they'll go and play the lottery every you single play day. play numbers, boy. What they hope to win, but will not save any money, will not invest any money. Like they will legit go and play the lottery every day, spending 30, 50, $100 a day on the lottery, hoping that they can win some money. Do they win sometimes? Yeah, absolutely. I got an uncle right now that he just, when I was growing up, he just hit. I was like, oh, you lucky. I don't know how you do it. Like, he was legit. But, you know, he told me one time, like, yeah, I might hit, bro, but you don't realize how much money I don't spend, like, when I finally get to it. You know what I'm saying? But just not even him, but other people who was, like, legit every day they playing the lottery hoping, but they don't invest in other things. And it's like, it's that mentality that we have that it's going to take a long time honestly for us to break that and a lot of that stuff is just in the web and, and interwoven into where we are now with this vaccine in the back of my mind what it really boils down to is i don't trust it that's really the only reason why i'm hesitating yeah, yeah. on getting it it's just i don't trust it why i don't trust because i don't trust the people who administer it why i don't trust the people that administer it like right. it goes on and on, and on you know what i'm saying it's yep. a cycle and so that's really what it boils down to but um you know, one thing that that we do have to keep looking at is 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 the science, bro. Like for anybody that's out there now, and, and this is not a political statement, bro, but like this is real. This pandemic yeah, is yeah. real. People are dying. Things are happening. Like I saw the on the news the other day where it might have been yesterday on the world news where they 
walked into a grocery store in Florida and not one person had on a mask in, in the entire grocery store. Florida's like a not, little space not right one, now, by the way. Crazy. Not one person. Like, the, the, the dude uh, was like, you would have thought that this was a video from two years ago. Like, it doesn't make sense that people computing in their brain that this stuff is not going on. And when they interview people, they'll say stuff like, oh, that, and it's not that many people that died. Like, it's a small percentage. And mm. it's like, if you want to be technical, yeah, it's a small mm -hmm. percentage. Like, when you're looking at grand it's a small percentage of y'all population. population. Of y'all population. Because yeah. it's not a small percentage of ours. That's right, the reality, right. bro. And, and yeah. I'll be keeping real with you, like, and not to cut you off, I mean, mm. once you finish, mm -hmm. you know, once you finish your statement, but it's just, that for me is the most uncomfortable thing about this whole picture, bro, is yeah. that you have people who clearly see the effects or see what's happening in the communities that look like ours. They will not change their ways for nothing, for nobody, bro. Like, no. I mean, you know, I mean, and we see popular examples of it. Like, you know, what's this crazy chick, Marjorie in the, you know, in the, in Congress, in, in the House of Representatives from Georgia, whatever her name is. And then, you know, all these other politicians who, you know, refuse to wear masks or, you know, basically got on this whole, you know, Trump cycle thing. And granted, I ain't trying to keep invoking his name because he, you know, we're, we're past that at this point. But, you know, my whole point is, man, you got people out here who legit are just selfish, honestly. Like they, they yeah. put themselves above, above others, um, namely, and, and it just, for me, it feels very direct to, you know, black people are, are, are communities of color because i mean obviously i've seen some of our folk you know walking around not wearing masks or wearing the mask the wrong way type of thing too yeah but the majority of stories and depictions that you see in the public you know are are white people who are it ain't us it ain't us bro it ain't, it ain't us, us you know we, they, put, we got all masks on bro. all the cameras are, are having a blast real quick right what's up real quick because i wanted uh, on this podcast uh, podcast i want us to do our due diligence i'm gonna i'm gonna give that conversation proper context her name is marjorie taylor green thank you that's was her she name. dismissed or something what happened yeah, what happened? I, yeah. I, I got a cnn alert three hours ago that said the uh, u.s house votes to remove gop representative marjorie taylor green from committee assignment in a way for the violent past comment so no we're gonna put a name to these people oh, because yeah. that's what Absolutely. happens like they they do this stuff and it goes away because we don't talk about it and they yeah. end up resurfacing a couple of years later, like ain't that happened. Like, I'll put a name to the face. And to, the, and, and to your point, to your point, Georgia, we're gonna see Marjorie in two years at, at, when it's time to, to reelect. And uh, let's just just remember all the foolishness, because the same yeah. way we came out and voted to to turn Georgia blue at the federal level, uh, we need to make sure that we're doing the same thing within the state. Because guess what? Even within the state, we might be blue, right? But like our our internal House of Representatives, Senate, blah blah blah. That's still really, really red. So yeah. let's just keep that in mind. That's and I digress. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. So um, you know, we got a we got a segment that we do from time to time on this podcast called Ask a Black Man, right? So <clears throat> this one is coming from me because I okay. I just want to know. I just want to know about Ask a Black Man. So like, how are we feeling about Black History Month? <laughs> <laughs> Man, shortest month of the year. I, for me personally, I, I just don't like the fact that black people got to be recognized one month out of the year. It's just, I mean, why, why can't we celebrate our greatness every month? Like, why we just have to highlight what you're, oh, it's just to, I mean, I don't know what it is. I, I don't know where it started. I don't, maybe I should do some research on the history of it. Uh, maybe y'all know, I don't know. Uh, but I just don't like the fact that, oh, it's Black History Month. So what was January? What month was that? Or what's March or August or whatever month? It's just, I don't like the fact that we have to be recognized and maybe things have changed. I mean, with the movements and the momentum that's going forward, maybe, you know, that's something that can be addressed. Like, you know, Let's just not set aside a time in the month of February, um, even though it's a good month, it's my birthday month, but whatever. Um, it's, it's just, I feel like it should be celebrated 12 months out of the year instead of just one month. Do you, do you, do you celebrate it at all? Um, I mean, it's not like I do anything special. 
I mean, yeah. that probably left when I got out of what um, like high school, school uh, high school, yeah. elementary school, middle school. But I mean, I don't do. I can't think of anything that I do special for the month of February. Yeah. You know what, Mo? <clears throat> I got two two things on that. Mm-hmm. One side is because <clears throat> if you ask, if I'm asking that question that you just asked, asked Corey, I don't do anything in particular either, right? And so that's the argument for some people saying that, oh, there should be a month so we can target and make sure that we focus, that we have a celebration that we can talk about and we can express how much uh, Black people have done um, in this country, in this world. Mm-hmm. So I get it on that side. I understand that. The, the shortest month of the year, that's just kind of like an ongoing joke. I know that that's just what people say, but I, I don't I don't pay that any, any, any real attention. But, but you want to know the reason why, the, you, if you talk to the average Black person, why they don't do anything special for Black History Month is because we live it every day. <laughs> I was going to say, that, that was the point I was getting at. Yeah. We live it every day, right? And so when you live in this every day, no, we, we don't, what, what are we talking about, right? Yes, can we learn the important figures that, that did some thir- certain things? Absolutely, right? You know, when I learned about George Washington Carver and, you know, the peanut and um, what Eli Whitney and the cotton gin and all, you know, all so on and so forth, all this stuff, like, that's great. That's great. I, I'm, I'm happy that I learned those things, right? But I want to talk about what's being affected to me right now. Like, if mm-hmm. I'm, I told, full transparency i just purchased my first vehicle right like in in life i've had cars before but thank you but they've been like you know my dad bought bought me a car when i was in high school and then y'all know the story my car kept getting stolen so we swapped out i got my parents old car and i've had that car for we got to tell that story one day too but yeah yeah (laughs) i've had that car for like um personally maybe three decades or something like that (laughs) <laughs> maybe 14, 15 years, something like hey. that. You crazy. <laughs> you say, how, how, pre- how many presidents? How many presidents? Three presidents. Three presidents. Three presidents. Three presidents. Three presidents. That's so, crazy. But the reason why I'm telling this story is that I started thinking about my tag. And I told my wife, I was like, oh, no, you know, I might get a Georgia State tag or I might get a Atlanta Braves tag. But I know I'm not getting a, a regular tag. And if I do, I'll make sure I put in God we trust. Mm-hmm. And she looked at me like, what? I was like, I was like, well, as a black man, I don't need I don't want people knowing what county I'm from. Mm. And I said that with so Dang. much sincerity that she was like, what you know, she kind of looked at me like, what what do you I was like, babe, I can't be a black man driving with a tag to say Fulton County and I'm in Cobb Facts. County. Facts. It don't or- look right. And, and yeah. she got what I was saying, but the thing is like, that's a reality as a black man that I have to think about, right? Mm-hmm. That's, so why I don't do celebrating every day about black history is because th- this is the reality that I'm living in, that I have to think about what county is on the back of my tag. I yeah. guarantee if you talk to any of our white counterparts, that ain't never came across their brain. Yeah, yeah. They never had to think about that. Cause we right. know, <laughs> I, I never thought about that. <laughs> nah, that's funny. I'm like, man, who I never thought about See, that. But, but you, <laughs> no, but it's you, real, though. Yeah. Even though you may have not thought about that, Corey, you do know that there's a real reality of, like, being a black man and how Cobb County view black men in, in this city. Like, that's just what we have right here. Like, deep Cobb Cobb. County. Huh? It's a deep Cobb. Yeah, deep Cobb. We ain't talking about Smyrna, bro. Smyrna. No, no, no. Deep. Oh, okay, right. okay. I'm straight. Yeah, 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 yeah. We straight now. Yeah, 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 we talking, yeah. we talking about once you get past Kennesaw, bro. Like all of that. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. yeah nah, Some I'm of them parts of Kennesaw and, and you know what I'm saying, Cannon and all that. Like, but mm-hmm. I, I mean, we're saying this jokingly, but the reality is, we've all been in some, and we've had an episode about, it, so we we'll don't have to go deep in it. But we've all had our own type of encounters with police where we we legit fear for our life, whether we had whether the police were at fault or not we've all had yeah. those, those instances that happen in our life so just come back around with black history but like i don't have to think about black history because like i legit walk out the door and i'm black i'm black all day every day i can't hide this blackness i, I say this about black history bro i a hundred percent appreciate 
the opportunity for everybody else to celebrate us. Like, mm -hmm. because really, I mean, just even based off of what you said, that's really, the, that's really what we're talking about. Like, that's really the whole purpose of Black History Month. It's really not for us to live the experience because we do live it. It's for everybody else to come into our world for once. Like, it's almost like a plea. It, it feels like a plea to me. Like, man, mm -hmm. come be about us for, the, even if it is the shortest month of the year. Like, let's get 28 to 29 days about Black people. Let's focus on it. Let's hear the stories. Let's pass down, you know, the legacies, the greatness. Talk about the impact that we've, you know, made across the history of this nation and the world. Um, let's do that. And let's not negate that nor shy away from it because, you know, as as great people, we deserve that, you know? And so I don't, I don't like view that in any way and I appreciate it. And I, and, and granted, yes, we, we, the, the thing that I have bigger issues about is when we see, you know, some of these companies all of a sudden jump on the bandwagon just because it's Black History Month. Like the emails that I've gotten from like clothing companies celebrating Black History Month right. when they never in their wildest dreams of a, of a normal life day would they ever mention anything remotely close to that? That's a little Actual, offensive. Yeah, you know, but that's what happened. That's what happened with the, after the whole George Floyd stuff. These companies donated exactly. money. But where that? I'm I'm trying to figure out where is that money? Like who? What they yeah. doing with or what kind of programs are they planning on um, entertain or or not entertaining, but making to yeah. you know advance black people? So. Mm -hmm. you, you, you'll find some that are legit. Like I've seen companies and I don't want to misquote one. I, I don't, I'm not going to say it because I, I wanted to be right, but I've seen a company where, you know, they've, you know, put money towards, um, you know, black um, initiatives and black communities mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. And they've like dedicated that money for the next 10 years or something like that. You know, and it might be a hundred million dollars goes to this over the course of 10 years. I can, yeah. I can completely say, you know, shouts out for that. Um, but you do see companies that's just jumping on the bandwagon for a right. PR stunt, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Needless to say, I will say this, like, you know, I am happy that not only does Black History Month do that for people who are at least open to hearing things about, you know, us, um, but I'm also grateful for our younger generation because, you know, our kids in normal schools, first of all, are in most cases, unless they're in our communities, um, they are not the majority. And they are not going to see a real version of history put in front of them from their history books. So for them to get flooded with images and stories of black greatness and black leaders and black um, icons and just black excellence in general, I feel like we, our kids need that. Like they need to see themselves as great. They need to see representation across the board. They need to go to school and it be all about them for once, you know? So I'm all for that. I, I, yeah, I, I totally, I'm to, I, at the same time, I have mixed emotions because I totally agree with you, Corey. Like, you know, it it is a little frustrating, you know, when you feel like it's kind of all for like a big show and you would prefer it to be done all year round, right? right. And, and, and for those of us that feel like that, you know, even as I'm saying this and I'm, I'm being real about our feelings and I'm glad we're having an honest conversation about Black History Month. I mean, on the Black Men Think podcast, but maybe that's for us a challenge to do more, you know, right. year round to educate mm -hmm. ourselves year round that's true. That's true. about yeah, our that's history, true. you know, um, because it's very easy to gripe about it. Right. And it's very easy to get offended by the way the, the misrepresentation everywhere else. But as a community, I think we need to do a better job at educating ourselves on our own, on our own greatness. Yeah. 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 So it's like, I mean, for my feelings about it, like, what can I, what am I doing personally to educate myself every month for black history? So, I mean, that's, yeah, that's a good point. That's a um, good thing to bring up. For sure. So, check this out. With that being said, I'm going to pull up a black history fact. There you How go. About that? All right. So, Corey, going back on what you said, the celebration of black history month began as Negro history week which was created in 1926 by Carter G. Woodson, a noted African-American historian, scholar, educator, and publisher. It became a month long celebration in 1976. The month of February was chosen to coincide with the birthdays of Frederick Doug Douglass and Abraham okay. Lincoln. Okay, so that deads the 
theory that oh they just picked Short up the month. shortest yeah. day in the month yeah. or shortest yep. month in the year, right? There you go. Um, yeah, there we go. That's that's that. I mean, that sums up what we were talking about. So, um, for anybody that wanted to know why that is what it is, that's the reason why. There you go. So, a little bit of history about Black History Month, and you know what? So, I kind of like the idea of this. Um, we need to make a note of it. Let's just let's just give a Black History fact every episode, bro. Like. Yeah. We can totally. commit to that. We're we're producing this podcast live right now while we're recording, but I mean, <laughs> I think that's a good idea, like to help push things forward. Let's just have a, a Black History fact, you yeah. know. Um, Let's this, celebrate I mean, ourselves. Yeah, celebrate yeah. ourselves. Like yeah. we are a part of American history, bro. So like, why not just you know do that ourselves? You know what I'm saying? So there sure. you go. I yeah. can do that, man. Yeah, okay. like Steve, we, we worked that out here on the Black Man Thing. That's podcast. growth. That's that growth. is growth. That is. is growth. That's growth. Uh, we got time for uh, Corey Sports Tape. What's up? I am disappointed with <laughs> why? Why? Uh -oh. the NBA because Atlanta, well, not just at, well, Atlanta, the state of Georgia, we're getting cheated out of our NBA All Star Weekend experience. Oh. Mm. So, NBA no, you got to give backstory on that, though. Yeah, so you got to give backstory. Agreed to have the um, NBA All Star. I think it's going to be March seventh, which is a Sunday, um, in Atlanta because it was supposed to be in Indianapolis, but I think it was canceled. So, why is in Atlanta? I think because we're wide open and they feel like you know it'll be a perfect place to have it. People can go out, do whatever they want to do, but it just for me, it's. I mean, it sucks because 2003, the, the All-Star game or All-Star weekend mm -hmm. in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. If you know, you my, know. That was our right. um, <laughs> second semester of our freshman year in college. Yep. And we know we lived off the North Avenue in the village, so we if know you how know, it was. you know. Woo. Too, too young to get in most places and too broke too. And so now it's like, you know... <laughs> 17 years later, we're a little older, a little wiser. We got a little little coins that we can do. Little coins in the pocket. A little but something. COVID, COVID canceling all that. I mean, I know it's going to be people still out there doing what they do, but I, I just Almost can't definitely. be out there. And not right. only that, it's just that I know how it was when the Super Bowl was here, like the opportunity, you mean, they have different events all over the city where you can get right. up and close with different athletes and celebrities, this, that, and the other. Um, and you won't have that. I mean, that's for most people, they may not ever really experience that. So for the All-Star Weekend to be here, we already know they're going to have the players on lock, which is smart because they don't want them to get COVID. Um, right. So it's like you're not going to really see anybody. I mean, you might see um, former players. Um, wait, wait. Or, so, so, so you really think the NBA about to have – let me ask you this. You really think the NBA is about to be able to control players in Atlanta? Like, like, like for instance, uh, Lemon Pepper Lou. Or, yeah, or James Harden. You think they're not yeah, gonna make their way down the street I think because of, to the city? I mean, I, it sounds like it's gonna be hard, but I, I believe that, and I don't know. I mean, this is my these are my thoughts that um, the NBA and the, the players' union is probably they're probably gonna come to some agreement with the players that I mean, I don't know if they may face fines or suspensions because it's like for one, it appears that they're having a game on one day. And I don't know about the slam dunk in the three point contest. It's been mentioned. I'm not 100 percent sure if they're gonna have it, but they're probably gonna have them players flying in, and they're gonna fly out as soon as possible because they're gonna have to play games the following week. So it's like yeah. you don't want to risk, you know, players coming back and you know they testing positive for COVID, and now you got to keep rescheduling games, and now you pushing the, the playoffs back, and it, it's just gonna be a problem. So. Um, and with social media, it messes people up. So, um, yeah, them going to Magic City might not be the answer, but Magic City might come to them. Let me let me just let True. me just say this: Magic City will definitely be all up in the Four Seasons <laughs> and um, the Ritz Carlton regions. The Ritz Carlton, regions. yeah, right. Ritz Carlton. I know they stay at, the, at, the, at Four Seasons for sure, but 
with the celebrity clientele that's coming in, oh, yeah, they're same definitely regions. in the same regions and, mm-hmm. and the, 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 <laughs> and probably the Ori- Chris Carl. Is it the Oriental or something down the street from the same regions? Either way, one of them high end. They gonna see them high end. So, they can social distance. I mean, you can see. I mean, <laughs> you still can. <laughs> You're a fool, man. <laughs> you still can social Mask distance on. do what you do, but I, I don't think it's, gonna, for some reason, I don't think it's going to be that easy, man. Like, Bro, I guarantee all right, so there's this theory, right? There's this theory, and we can end the podcast shortly, but I, I do want to say there's this theory. I've asked several people, y'all know this, but when athletes come to Atlanta, particularly basketball, you ever notice that they typically, that's the game they sit out? Mm. Like, that happens a lot. People come here and they sit out. Or the other thing, we wow. Sorry, we've been you sorry, right, though. too. I, I mean, because we, we've been sorry, so that's a game they can be on their schedule and be like, all right, we can see that. Sounds real game. good, Court. <laughs> no, that sounds really good. Land this plane though, because I see where you're going. So, and there's also the theory that we always talk about, like why in basketball in particular is it so difficult for us to get a free agent, high-profile player to come to Atlanta? Like this has never happened. Like the highest profile player that we've had to come to Atlanta was what Joe Johnson? That to come, not to get drafted. To come right to the now, city with yeah, Joe Judson. Maybe Dwight Howard. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. We, we, getting Rondo, we getting Rondo on the back end. But but both of those, the White Howard. Vince on the back both, end. We yeah. both got them on the back end when they were not, they're not really who they are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, just, and so the theory, and I've been. But, but, but you can say, but, but I got time to just say something. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can say that about a, a, quite a few teams. I'm just thinking about maybe. You saying getting somebody to come in? I'm thinking about like maybe I don't know the Pacers. Who did they have to come in? Oh, like, George. Huh? No, he. But he. He got he, drafted. Yeah. He got drafted. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, we drafted Trey Young. I'm saying. Somebody yeah, but but star. I feel you though because Atlanta is still the mecca. It's the a South. big market. We're, we're like, talking about one of the top five, six cities in the. Yeah, we're talking about a huge market. Like Indianapolis is not. It's a some huge backstory, there, but go ahead. I don't want to keep this real. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> And so the theory that's going around, and this this might be a little race for the Black Man Thing podcast, but I said, Atlanta is home of all of those NBA player side chicks. And so they don't want to come to Atlanta. <laughs> Yo, hey, why are you playing though? Why are you playing? There's high this possibility. Is, so this is the home of their side chicks and what? And that's why they don't want to come here. They don't want to be here. 41 games out the year right? because they side chicks are here. So they can't move their families and everything to wow. Atlanta because all of their side chicks are here. That's so you crazy. Start, so I've never heard the that. The theory is saying that Atlanta is home to a lot of athletes, side chicks. That That's the theory. And this is not coming from, mm. this is not from my mouth. This is from other people. I'm just, I'm just reciprocating what they have told me. And I'll just leave it at that. Well, I mean, we, you know, we, 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 we're here. We, we know Atlanta culture. We know what, yeah, what yeah. goes down um, yeah. in, in Atlanta. We know why people fly in to the most busy city, a busy uh, airport. You right. know, we know why it's the most busy airport. Um, and, you know, they, they don't just make, you know, they don't make transfer flights here. They, they pit stop in Atlanta. A lot of people do. Mm-hmm. We, we, we know the culture, you know, it, it's, yep. it's real. So that's so you have it. Yeah. <laughs> That is a what? theory. I, I've that's never that's that, but I can see that being uh, an unspoken thing within the NBA ranks. I can totally see that. Hey, yeah, I'm just saying. But hey, hey, side note before before we close out, go ahead, go ahead. We gotta we gotta go deeper into the stories of of the seven. You know, uh, the Black Men Think podcast, all seven of our voices. But there's a reason why. There's such frustration coming out of C. Wiz today with NBA All Star Weekend, and we 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 you know we hinted at it, but we haven't really shared the, we, the joys um, of 2003 yeah. NBA yeah. All Star Weekend and a lot of our <laughs> other stories. You know, yeah. we talked about this before we started recording, but um, at some point we're probably gonna have to get that Patreon or uh, something equivalent started where we can do some behind the scenes content. Oh yeah, um, yeah. We don't know yet. We haven't started that yet. We don't know when we'll start that. But if you think that's a good idea, 
um, let us know, you know, shoot us a DM or a comment and, and let us know if you would like to hear more behind the scenes of the Black Man Thing podcast, right? Whether it's that like Black Afterthoughts or just us pre-production or, you know, just <laughs> us like our our everyday group chat. Like if, if y'all yeah. think that that's a good idea, let us know. Cause we don't want to start this if it's not a good idea, right? We don't want to do it if you guys are not going to check it out. So if you feel like it's a good idea and you want to check it out, let us know. And um, we'll start getting to work on it. Cause we got a lot of content. We got episodes that when we started a new, uh, uh, another podcast that never came out we got about right probably about 10 episodes that we haven't dropped that's just kind of chilling in the ball so um let us know man, give, them, give them a snippet man what 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 do y'all remember the most from 2003 17 years mm. ago in Atlanta being if you know you know 17 18 years old I'll say this where we stayed at in the village for those that don't know, the Georgia State Village is now Georgia Tech Village or whatever. But where we stayed at was on in the middle of like literally the middle of like downtown Midtown. Like we were, yeah. we were right in the middle of everything. And so I just remember if you go up North Avenue and you hang that left on Peachtree sitting in traffic. And that used to be because everybody used to go to, but this was when Buckhead was popping, popping. Well, I forgot about um, Buckhead. Yeah. And so yeah. what will happen is People on any given Friday, Saturday night, people would go drive on Peachtree and drive, like start, mm -hmm. start at North Avenue and they would literally drive all the way down Peachtree till they got the Buckhead. Mm -hmm. And any flashy car, people with their systems, all that going on, like that, that used to happen. So whenever I think about All-Star, I just think about how packed the city was. Cause for us, that used to be like an hour drive to Buckhead on a regular. Yeah. All the weekend, it felt like that was probably about three hours ago. Like, Bruh, it just it, was not moving at all. That was literally my memory. My, I was going to say, my, my answer was going to be Peachtree Street. Mm -hmm. Period. Because I have never in my life been in gridlock traffic on one road and it been lit like you sitting in the middle of a club. And happy about being in traffic. And happy about being <laughs> in traffic. <laughs> Because on both sides, going both ways, literally, you are gridlocked. People getting out of their car, music blasting. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, and we remember, you know, uh, you know, images of like the 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 great freak Nick, and, and you yeah, know, yeah. when Atlanta, you know, nineties, mid nineties, all that stuff. But this was probably the closest thing to that, without it maybe being as loose as, as yeah, that was. Yeah. yeah. But it was just it was a blast for any college student. Who knew? And, and again, if you know, you know, if you were in, in Atlanta during that year, if you were at any Atlanta college during that year, then you probably know you probably experienced 2003 NBA All-Star Weekend. It, it will never be another. Never like that again. Not in this city. Yeah. yeah was that also the same year we had NBA players in uh, one of our parties? Definitely. I think it was. Was that the uh, year? Uh, I think that was Athena, though. Okay. Okay. Yeah, was, yeah. I don't think we're, it was our party. We were in Sparta. Was, yeah, we were in Sparta. Yeah. Freshman. Okay. Yeah. So that was another year. Yeah. Yeah, that was a thing. <laughs> so that would be, if you want that story, that would be a, a, a Patreon <laughs> The story of an NBA. Was he an All Star? Maybe an All Star that year. I'm not sure. He was definitely at the peak of his career during that time. Yeah. At one of our parties at Georgia State Village. Crazy. That's, man. Yeah. All right. The legendary. <laughs> Hey, Black Man Think Podcast. Um, if y'all like what y'all hearing, thank y'all for listening, number one. But make sure y'all rate, subscribe, and review the podcast. Tell a friend to tell a friend. The only way that we grow is that we grow together. So we need y'all to listen and actively go and tell people because we are growing at a good rate, but we want to grow more. We're on YouTube. We got to get those views up. So I know y'all are listening. Thank you. But we need y'all to actually watch what we got going on. So Pleasure. until we can get in one room again, we are on Zoom. That's cool. We're gonna make it I work. I miss y'all, hey. man. I know, bro. Boys, I just want to like legit just play some spades and pull up, play some music, and you know, drink a couple of brews or you know, have a good bro, time. We might be the only two in the crew that know how to play spades. So I don't know how we can do that. Yeah, I mean, yeah they I, can't play spades. Yeah, I'm on the Black Man Think podcast. I don't know how to play spades. It's all good, man. Sorry. It's cool. You have to change the diaper, though, boy. I can change yeah. the diaper all day, though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, we'll see y'all next week. The 
Black Men Think Podcast.